وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد the next point of Muhammad Tuhawi says the Khani والله تعالى يستجيب الدعوات ويقبل الحاجات again this is you won't find this in the normal aspects or uh, matters of aqida but it's one of the good things to believe about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which you can say is part of aqida and that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yastajibu da'wat Allah he responds to the calls you make and to the du'as you make the supplication wa yaqbil hajat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he solves for you whatever you ask of him this is a great aspect of tawhid belief in Allah aqida that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he responds to your dua and where did the imam get this is this his own statement no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum and your lord has said ask me and i will respond Allah says that your lord has said ask me and i will respond and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said what wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb ujibu da'wat ad-da'i idha da'ani and when my slaves ask you about me then i'm very close i respond to their dua the supplication of those who make a supplication when they ask me so this is something which has to be firm in fact it's one of the reasons why your duas are accepted or not accepted the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said when you ask allah ask him with conviction ask him with conviction and do not ask while trying trial and error let me ask and see if he'll accept it that dua will never be accepted that dua will never be accepted the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says ud'u allah wa antum muqinuna bil ijaba ask allah while you have certainty that allah is going to respond to you why why again because allah he says in the quran ask me i will give you so if someone allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to you ask me i'll give you why would you have a doubt you understand part of your duas i'm saying this to everybody including myself ask yourself maybe this is the problem i have with my duas or my supplications when i ask they're not accepted maybe i'm asking without conviction and certainty ask allah while you're certain that allah is going to accept and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says allah accepts every dua uh, man lam yakun ithmun as long as you're not asking for something which is sinful aw qati'atu aw qati' rahim or something in which you're cutting off the relations with your own family as long as there's no those two things then every dua is accepted but now comes to those things the manners of asking dua the conditions of asking are you doing it properly or not are you doing it properly or not naam so we believe that Allah he accepts the duas ikhwani ah wa yaqdi alhajat and Allah he gives us what we ask for he solves our problems Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what ikhwani ah Allahu as-samad Allahu as-samad you know the meaning of as-samad what is the meaning of samad الذي يسند اليه الحوائج الصمد is the one who every need is taken to him every need humans jinns insects animals trees whatever it is every kind of need it is taken to to him while he does not need anyone that is a samad one of the most beautiful and great names of allah طيب So Allah is a samad. He solves your problems for you. Nobody can solve them for you. And Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, "Amman yujibu al-mudhtarr idha da'ahu wa yakshifu as-su' wa yaj'alukum khulafa' al-ard." Ilaahu ma'a Allah, ta'ala Allah. Subhanallah. Who's the one who responds to the one who's in stress when you really need something and the one who fulfills your needs? Is there any other god besides Allah who does that? 
Then says, Hasha qal subhanak ya Rab, nobody else. So this is from the base aqeedah, tawheed. You should know that. Nobody can take care of me. Nobody can solve my problems. Nobody can accept my dua except Allah. This is very important. This is very important. And there's some beautiful words from Ibn Aqil al-Hanbali to show how beautiful this concept is that we have to ask Allah and how it relates to Allah himself subhanahu wa ta'ala and his names and attributes. He says, وَقَدْ نَدَبَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى لَلْدُعَاءَ And Allah has encouraged us to make dua. وَفِي ذَلِكَ مَعَانٍ And there's secrets and meanings to that. Number one, أَحَدُهُ أَحَدُهَا Number one, he said الوجود, even though we don't say from the names of Allah is الموجود, as some people they say, Allah is الحي, 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 the one who has most perfect life. He has the most perfect life. He says, so the one who is not perfect in life, you cannot ask him, right or wrong. That is why the most, in the greatest verse of the Quran, which is which verse? Ayatul Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. You see how Allah describes himself, himself, sorry, he is al hayy, the one who is the most perfect in life, al qayyum. What does al qayyum mean? The one who serves and gives everybody what they want and need. That's the meaning of al qayyum. But then Allah describes himself. To show us that we need him only. He does not sleep nor does he slumber. Anywhere else, if you want to seek help, anybody else, if you want to seek help, they always have what you call what? Office hours. Downtime. That's the reality. That's the reality. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is always there. That is a proof to show you what? He, you should ask Allah. You should ask Allah. Number two, he says, Allah is al ghaniyu like we just mentioned previously. al ghaniyu is the opposite of faqir. al ghaniyu is the most rich, the self-sufficient. He said because the one who is poor, he cannot be asked. So automatically, Allah who is the most rich, the self-sufficient, you should do what? You should ask him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is as samiu The one who hears everything. Why? Because the one who cannot hear you, can you ask him? Can you ask the person who cannot hear you? No. That's why you should ask Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-kareem. Al-kareem, the most generous. Because al-bakhil, the one who's stingy, can you ask him? Can you ask him? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sif of rahmah, the most merciful one. Because the one who's qasi, the one who's hard-hearted, can you ask, can you go to that person for your problems? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is qudra, he is al-qadir, he is able over everything, he can do everything. Can you go and ask someone who he is limited in ability? No. The beautiful names of Allah, that's the greatest knowledge you can have. You get to know Allah. Once you get to know Allah, everything falls into place. Your salah, your dua, everything falls into place. You know who Allah is. Tahib? Naam. For those of you who don't have the book, the accepted dua, the manners of making dua, come see me after the class, I'll give you the book. I'll give you the book. And for those who are listening, you don't have the book, you can send me an email. You can send an email, imam, I-M-A-M, at abuhuraira.org.org. Now, and it says on that same point, وَيَمْلِكُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Allah is the one who owns everything. Isn't that enough, Yikhani, for us to ask Allah? And to ask nobody else. He's the one who owns everything. وَيَمْلِكُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ He's the one who owns everything. Like Allah said, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ Al-Mulk. Glorified is Allah in whose hand is everything. The dominion belongs to him. 
وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Whatever is in the heavens, whatever is in the earth belongs to Allah. Naam. وَلَا يَمْلِكُهُ شَيْءٌ And nothing has control over Allah. وَلَا يُسْتَغْنَى عَنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى تُرْفَةَ عَيْنٍ And no one can be independent of Allah even for the blinking of an eye, even for that millisecond. You cannot be independent of Allah because if, you, if that happens, you'll be destroyed. That is why we always ask Allah to be in charge of our affairs every time, every moment. That is why from the adhkar, you have to make every morning and evening, every morning and evening, you say what? Ya hayyu ya qayyum. You see those two beautiful names? Just like they come in Ayatul Kursi. You say, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, O oh Allah, the ever living, the one who is the perfect life, the one who is sustaining everything, Al Qayyum. Bi rahmatika astaghithu. I seek assistance by your mercy. Aslihli, make good for me. Sha'ni kullahu, all of my affairs. Wala takilni la nafsi, and do not make me to be in charge of myself. Even for the blink of an eye. It's a very important dua you have to make every morning and every evening. You'll find it in Husn al Muslim, that small book, Fortification of the Muslim. Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghithu, aslihli sha'ni kullahu, wa la takilni la nafsi, tarfata aynin. Very important. Huh? And whoever feels that he is independent of Allah, even for the millisecond of the blink of an eye, then he has become a kafir and he has become a disbeliever. Because you're saying what? You're saying what? I have enough power just like Allah has power. And you'll become from the losers. You'll become from the losers. Naam. And then he continues on to say, Khwan, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَ يَغْضِبُ وَيَرْضَى لَكَ أَحَدٍ مِّنَ الْوَرَى This is from the Masail, the issues of the attributes of Allah. We discussed this in the beginning in detail. Right or wrong, Muhammad? Abu Muhammad, we discussed this in detail. Right or wrong? What do we believe about the attributes of Allah, the actions of Allah? We say we do what? We affirm all of them. Just like Allah, he mentioned them for himself. And the Prophet sallallahu mentioned an authentic hadith. Without doing what? Without changing their meanings. And without uh, denying them. And without a tashweeh, without making Allah similar to anything else. So you say also, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى And surely Allah the exalted. يَغْضَبُ وَيَرْضَى Allah, he becomes angry. And he is pleased. Those are the, from, the true, uh, from the two attributes of Allah. Pleasure, rida, and ghadab, anger. Why do we say Allah becomes angry and Allah, he becomes pleased? Why do we say that? Because this is what Allah said about himself. Where? Give me the proof. Give me the proof. That's for everybody. Give me the proof. Sant. What is what is say Surah Al Fatiha? You say, Ihdina Surah Al Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Surah Al Ladina and Amta Alehim, the path of those who have bestowed your favors on. Ghairil Maghdubi Alehim, not the path of whom you are angry on. Not the path of whom you are angry on. That shows you Allah becomes angry. Another proof, we mention it today, Juan. We mention it today. Half an hour or 45 minutes ago. وَلَا يَرْضَى لِعِبَادِهِ الْكُفْرِ Allah does not, is not pleased when you commit kufr. Another proof. Naam? لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ لَا وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانَ Allah talks about the muhajireen who are poor. 
they were taken out and they left the lands in Mecca for the sake of Allah. Why? Because they seek the fadl, the bounties of Allah and the rida, the pleasure of Allah. So Allah becomes pleased. So these are two attributes of Allah. And then Imam though he says to affirm the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah, لا كأحد من الوراء We say Allah he becomes pleased and Allah he becomes angry but it is not in the same way as any of the creatures. Just like all of the other attributes of Allah, ikhwani. Allah does he see or not? Yes, Allah is al-basir, he sees everything. Does he hear or not? Yes, Allah does he have knowledge or not? Yes, but we say the principle is what? For him all these attributes are what? Perfect, yaliqu bi jalali, according to his majesty. We don't know how they are. Not like us. Not like us. You understand? Naam. La ka ahadin min al wara. Allah says, Laqad radiyallahu anil mu'minina idh yubayyuna ka tahta shajara. Allah has been pleased with the believers when they gave you the pledge of allegiance under the tree. And so many other verses. So many other verses. Naam. The next point. Naam. This is one of the main points of the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah, Ikhwan. Wa nuhibbu ashaba Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ولا نفرط في حب أحد منهم ولا نتبرأ من أحد منهم ونبغض من يبغضهم وبغير الخير يذكرهم ولا نذكرهم إلا بخير وحبهم دين وإيمان وإحسان وبغضهم كفر ونفاق وطغيان. He says. And we love the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَا نُفْرِطُ فِي حُبِّ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ But we don't go into extreme in loving any of them. وَلَا نَتَبَرَّعُ مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ Neither do we disassociate ourselves, meaning hate any of them. وَنُبْغِضُ مَنْ يُبْغِضُهُمْ And we hate. Those who hate the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we hate those who mention the companions in a bad way. And we do not speak about the companions except in what is good. حبهم, loving them. Deenun, that is our religion. وإيمانun, that is real belief. Iman. وإحسانun, that is real ihsan. أبغضهم and hating the companions كفر it is كفر ونفاق and hypocrisy وطغيان and passing the limits. So one of the most beautiful statements you can find in the عقيد of أهل السنة in regards to the Sahaba the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. We love all of the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم without going to extreme. Neither on this side or this side. We don't associate, disassociate ourselves from any of them or hate any of them. Why do we say this? What is the proof though? That we have to love the companions. The Prophet said what? Allahu, Allahu fi ashabi. Remember Allah, remember Allah about my companions. لا تتخذوهم غرضا. Do not take my companions as people to speak about. But that speaks about not speaking bad about them. Okay, what is the proof we have to love them? The hadith of the scholars any اختلف. Is it صحيح or not? نعم. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. If Allah is pleased with them, who are me and you to come and say we are not pleased with them? And the definition of Islam is to love 
what Allah loves and to hate what Allah hates. You understand? That's Islam. So Allah loves them. That's why we love them. Okay, Akhi, what's your proof though? What's your proof that Allah loves them? Where? What does it say? That's about all the believers. Surah al Bayna is speaking about the believers. It doesn't speak about the Sahaba specifically. No. Allah says, Was Sabiqun al Awaluna min al Muhajirina wal Ansar wal Ladina Tabaruhum bi Ihsanin radi Allahu anhu wa radu anhu. Surah al Tawbah, verse number 100. Surah al Tawbah, verse number 100. Allah says, In the first and foremost, of the Muhajirin, those who left Makkah to go to Medina, and the Ansar, and those who follow them in their way, Allah is pleased with them, and they will be pleased with Allah, and Allah has prepared for them gardens under which rivers flow. So Allah is pleased with them. And the verse we just read, Allah says, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَيْعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَ Allah is pleased with the believers when they gave you the pledge of allegiance under the tree. This happened in the sixth year during the day of Hudaybiyah at Hudaybiyah. And Jabir said there was 1,400 of us. You understand? And so many other proofs. Another one? The Prophet sallallahu said, Khairu ummati qarni. The best of my ummah are who? My generation. These followers of mine. Those are the best Muslims. So if they are the best Muslims, that means what? We love them or we hate them. We have to love them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ And those who are with Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's not me and you. Those are with him. Those we call the Sahaba, the companions. أَشِدَّاعُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارُ وَحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ تَرَاهُمْ رُكَّعًا سُجَّدًا يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانَ سِيمَاهُ فِي وَجُوهِ مِنْ أَثَرِ السُّجُودِ Allah praised them so much. Outwardly, the people of Ibadah and inside the people who really love Allah. And so many other verses. So this is our aqidah, ikhwan. This is our aqidah. We love the companions of the Prophet ﷺ without going to extreme. Without going to extreme. Like who? Like the Shia to Rafidah. They went into extreme about Ali until they made him God. Until they made him better than the Prophet. Until they made him God himself. We don't do that. وَلَا نُفْرِطُ وَنَتَبَرَّأُ مِنْ أَحْدِ مِنْهُمْ And at the same time also, we never disassociate ourselves from any of them. We have to love all of them. And stay in the middle path. وَنُبْغِضُ مَنْ يُبْغِضُهُمْ And we hate those who hate the companions. This is our aqidah. Why? Because this person is hating the people Allah loves. You think Allah will love this person? He is hating the awliya of Allah. Allah chose these people. This is exactly al-wala al-bara. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, Man kana minkum mustannan fal yastannu bil amwat fa inna al-ahya'a la tu'manu alayhim al-fitna. Whoever of you wants to follow let him follow those who have passed away. Because those people are still alive, they are not safe from fitna. Could be good today, tomorrow they are bad. Who does he mean? He says, Ulaika ashabu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those are the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to follow, those are the people to be followed. Ulaika ashabu Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abarru hadhi al-ummati quluban. وَأَسْدَقُهَا عِلْمًا They had the best hearts in terms of fearing Allah of all of this ummah. And they had the best people of knowledge in regards of all of this ummah. You understand? قَوْمٌ There are people اِخْتَارَهُمُ اللَّهُ لِسُحْبَةِ نَبِيِّهِ وَنُسْرَةِ دِينِهِ Allah, He chose them. These are the people who are going to be around my best prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And these are the people Allah chose to do what? To give victory and to aid his religion. Allah chose them. So you have to love them. You understand? Naam. This is very much in brief. Very much in brief. So this is a refutation of the Shia to Rafidah, those who hate the Sahaba. Not only do they hate the Sahaba, they even go to extreme to say what? All of the Sahaba, they became kafir after the Prophet ﷺ died, except seven of them. That's what the Shia to Rafidah believe. The Shia is not Sharia. That's what their books say. That's what their most authentic book to them, Al-Kafi. That's what it says. That is pure kufr. Because if all of them became disbelievers, then who brought this religion to us? Who brought this religion to us? Disbelievers. Can we trust the disbelievers? No, then there's no religion. That's exactly what they want. And that is what exactly what Al-Imam, uh, is it Abu Zur'a? He said that. He said, these people, ulaika zanadiqa, those are the heretics. They could not find a way to discredit this religion. So they discredit the people who carried the religion to us. You understand? If you say this message came from someone who's evil, someone evil came to you and said to you, you know, this and this happened. What do you do usually? Can you trust that? No, right or wrong? That is exactly what they want. Imam Abu Zura, he said that a thousand years ago, a thousand years ago. He said, the people, they wanted to attack the religion. But, but they cannot attack the religion, so they attack the people who carried the religion. And if you say, these are the companions of the Prophet Wasallam, what do you say about him? You say that he was an evil person also. That's why he was around evil people. Kufrun billah. Kufrun billah. So be careful that you don't get dragged into the belief of the Shia. Or you'll find some of them, they speak about some Sahaba specifically. You find some people, they are Sunnis, Ahl Sunnah, yet they hate Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. You're in a great danger. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is a great Sahabi. He used to write the Quran for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He is a brother-in-law of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. if you didn't know. Whatever happened between the Sahaba is between them. You have no part to play in that. You are not sent as a judge over them. People Allah is pleased with already. They were humans. So whatever happened between them, that's what happens between humans. And Allah said before that, I've forgiven them. You understand? So be careful. This is our aqidah. We don't speak bad. That's why he say next. We hate all those who hate the Sahaba. And all those who mention the Sahaba and what is not good. Those people who speak bad about the Sahaba. Any Sahabi. Any Sahabi. This is against our Aqeedah. It's against our Aqeedah. Anybody who speaks evil about any Sahaba. Whether it is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Or the Sahaba you never heard about before. That is, we hate that person. He has to correct his mistake. If it was unintentional, Allah will forgive him. You understand? And he said, We don't speak about the companions of the Prophet ﷺ except by what is good. Except by what is good. Again, why? Because these are people, Allah, the Creator. He said, I'm pleased with them. Who are you to come speak bad about them? That is why the Prophet ﷺ said what? Allah has cast the one who casts or speaks bad about my companions. Allah has cast him. Not just Allah and the angels and the believers, they all cast this person. <coughs> so the Prophet said, What? When people speak about my companions, hold your tongue. Hold your tongue. You think after the permission of Allah, this religion will be here today without those great people? They gave everything, everything they gave for this religion. That's why when you hear the stories today, you say, what kind of people are these? Right? So what kind of people are these? These people already, they gave everything for Allah. 
They gave everything for Allah. Naam. Hubbuhum, loving them. Deenun, that is our religion. Wa imanun, that is part of iman. Wa ihsanun, in fact, it's a high state of iman. Loving them. Loving them. Loving the Sahaba, Ikhwani. That could be a reason Allah enters into Jannah. That itself is a great action, just loving those people. Abuduhum and disliking them or hating them, kufrun, that is kufr. Wa nifaqul, that is hypocrisy. Wa tughyan, and that is passing the limits. Because Allah says He's pleased with them. Allah said He's giving them Jannah. You say, no, I don't like them. It's kufr. Kufr. Waliyadam billah. Naam. And like I said, and I'm saying it again, this topic itself, we could cover it in days and days. Naam. And part of that belief of ours about the Sahaba, he said, "Onusbitu al khilafat ba'da Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam awwalan li Abi Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu tafdilan lahu wa taqdiman ala jami' al-Ummah." And we affirm, and we affirm the Khilafa, the Caliphate, after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away. First and foremost was Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu. Tafdilan lahu because he was the most excellent. Wa taqdiman ala jami' al-umma and because he was the best of all of this umma after its prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is part of our belief and nobody differed on that except the Shia and the Khawarij. You have to know also the Khawarij they hate the Sahaba. For those of you who were here maybe last weekend when we talked about the Khawarij, you know that. We affirm that. Why? Why do you say Abu Bakr was the best? Because of so many proofs. Who can give me one proof? Give me one proof that Abu Bakr is the best of all the Sahaba. Now the Arhamu. The proof. Proof, hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Naam. Ahsant. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became sick, the last few days of his life, he said, What? Muru Abu Bakrin for your salib in Nas. Command Abu Bakr, he has to lead the prayer. That is indirectly or directly, some scholars say, directly saying what? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is appointing who? Abu Bakr. Because the salah is the best place where the Muslims they meet. Now he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is sick. He says, who should take my place? Abu Bakr. To the point that in one hadith, in Sahih Muslim, Abu Bakr was late, or he's not there. So the people, they put Umar in front. When the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got sense because he was sick. And he said, who's leading salah? They said, Umar. He said, no, go call Abu Bakr and they have to repeat the salah. To that extent, you understand? Abu Bakr, nobody comes close to him. He was the best person after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is also the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, because we talked about khulla in, in, in uh, At-Tahawi, right? He said what? وَلَوْ <laughs> Abu Bakr and Khalila. We talked about this few weeks ago. The Prophet is said, I am the Khalil of Allah, the most close and beloved of Allah. But if I was to take a Khalil from the people of the earth, I would take who? Abu Bakr. Now, I mean, so many other proofs. And the Prophet وسلم, in the clear hadith, Ikhwani, uh, in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said to Aisha, أُدْعِي لِي عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَانِ أَخُوكُ وَأَبُوكَ أَبُو بَكْرٍ Call for me your brother and your father Abu Bakr لِأَكْتُبْ So I can write for them 
so, so I can write for him so I can write for him فَإِنِّي أَخَافُ or you can say مُعَاذَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَقْتَلِفَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي أَبِي بَكْرٍ or in another narration he said what فَلَا يَتْمَعُ فِي هَذَا الْأَمْرُ تَامِعُ وَلَا يَقُولْ قَائِلْ so nobody can say anything after I pass away or nobody can have desires to be the leader very clear hadith and the sahaba all of them they knew that that's why after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away and the Ansar they, they gathered in the Saqifah Banu, Banu Sa'ad and they said we're going to elect a leader of ours Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh or Sa'ad ibn Ubadah when Umar had the news he took Abu Ubaidah and Abu Bakr and he said to them these are the words Umar said the Ansar they said we will have a leader you will have a leader and Umar said to them this matters for the Quraysh. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. The leader has to be from Quraysh. So how can you be a leader? And then he said to them, And who amongst you wants to be a leader of Abu Bakr? That's what he said to them. And nobody said anything. Because they knew. Everybody knew that. Even the stories I've told you before. Umar. Umar who's the second best person. Everybody knew that. Nobody comes close to Abu Bakr. Radiallahu anhu, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made him the best companion. Thani athnaini idhuma fil ghar. That he was the one who accompanied the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the most dangerous time of his life when they made hijrah from Mecca to Medina. Naam. And again we can speak a lot but we just summarize. <coughs> so we say the khilafah, he was deserving and it was for Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Unlike what the Shia they say, uh, that the Khalifa after the Prophet was supposed to be Ali and that the Sahaba, the companions they conspired to, 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 to against Ali lies on top of lies because of, even in their own books even in the Shia books Ali radiallahu anhu he says clearly nobody says I am better than Abu Bakr and Umar except I will flog him I will lash him if I catch anyone saying that I will lash him as people are following their hawa and then he says next and then he says next and we finish off with this what does he say next to Muhammad ثم لعمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه ولا ما عندك هذا لا ثم لعمر and then after Abu Bakr is for Umar رضي الله عنه and no two believers differ on that except again the Shia to Rafidha ولي آدم بالله no believers differed on that. Because Abu Bakr, he appointed. He said, I'm dying and the leader is you, Umar. And everybody is a witness. And if Allah asks me, if Allah asks me, I'll tell Allah, Ya Rabb, I put the best person after me. Nobody differed on that. Everybody knew that automatically. Umar uh, was the one who deserved to be the, the Khalifa. And in the famous hadith, in the famous hadith which is reported in the Sahih al-Bukhari, the hadith of Muhammad bin al-Hanafiya. Muhammad bin al-Hanafiya is the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu. But he's famously known as Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiya, instead of Muhammad ibn Ali. Why? Who knows why? Ah, Samir. Naam? Because there's another Muhammad ibn Ali. That's a good answer. Why is he called Muhammad bin Hanafiya? Because there's another Muhammad also, the son of Ali. By the way, this is common. You can call two of your sons Muhammad, that's fine. Muhammad al Kubra and Muhammad al Sughra. You know how our, our black American, even some white uh, American or Caucasian brothers, they have that junior and senior. John, junior and John, senior. Whatever they call it. You can have that. Yeah? I fear some of you will come and say, oh, this is a bid'ah. <laughs> he is not a sunni anymore. Jazakallah khairan. So this is something known. Anyway, Al-Hanafiya was his mother. His mother was from the tribe of Hanifa. So she's called Hanafiya. So he is known for this. Muhammad ibn Al-Hanafiya is known for this. He is a son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Anhu. He says, this is in Sahih al-Bukhari and Abu Dawood and other books. 
He says, Sa'al to Abi, I asked my father. Ya Abati, oh my father. Man khayrun nas ba'da Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who's the best person after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Faqal Abu Bakr, he said Abu Bakr. Thumma qultu man, then I said who after? Faqal Umar, he said Umar. He says, thumma qultu ana, thumma qultu ans, I said, and then I said it's you. Because I didn't want him to say Uthman radiallahu anhu. And he said, no, I'm just a man from the other man. That the wadu' they had, that humbleness they had. Huh? Well, this is a clear proof that everybody know after Abu Bakr was Umar radiallahu anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said clearly, he said clearly, huh? اقتدوا بالذين من بعدي أبو بكر وعمر. Follow after me. These two people, Abu Bakr and Umar. That's a clear con uh, command of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. After me, follow these two, Abu Bakr and Umar. And the hadith. How many hadith have you heard? Abu Bakr and Umar went here with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Bakr and Umar went there with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Prophet ﷺ did this with Abu Bakr and Umar and, and like that. Naam. Thumma li Uthman radiyallahu anhu and after Abu Bakr was Uthman. After Umar, sorry, was Uthman. Because when Umar radiyallahu anhu was passing away, he called six of the ten people. He said, I'm going to leave this matter with these people who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he passed away and was pleased with them, the best Muslims. He called them, five of them actually. He called who? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and who? Az Zubair ibn Awam. He said, you will choose a leader between you. And if you're split, if the votes are split, two people here, two people here for someone, then Abu, uh, uh, Abd, uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, my son, only then he'll be involved. But until then, he's not involved. He left it to the best people to decide. The most knowledgeable people, the most fearful people of Allah. Unlike the systems we live in today where everybody votes. He doesn't even know Surah Al-Fatiha, he has a vote, because he's a citizen. He doesn't know what is good or is bad, he has a vote. That's not Islamic. Islamical is the people of knowledge. The people who know the worldly affairs, they are the ones who choose the leader. People of the deen, they are the ones who choose the leader. That's the difference. So they decided, the famous story, you know, until it came down to who? To Uthman and, and Ali. And all of them agreed to Uthman radiallahu anhu and he was chosen as the Khalifa. And after Uthman radiallahu anhu thumma and Uthman radiallahu anhu we you know his fadail, his excellences. Who knows one of his excellences? Naam. No, no, apart from yes, he's going to Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said Abu Bakr fil Jannah, Umar fil Jannah, Uthman fil Jannah, Ali fil Jannah, Zubair fil Jannah. They're going to Jannah already. Other than that, Hassan, the Prophet ﷺ, one day he was sitting in his house and some of his thigh was showing. He's at his home. And Abu Bakr came to visit and he stayed like that. That's his companion, they're very close, he knows him. Umar came, he stood like that. And then Uthman came and knocked. This is the hadith of Aisha. She says in the Prophet ﷺ, he got up and he covered himself properly and he sat up. Uthman came, he spoke and then he left. When he left Aisha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah wasallam. Abu Bakr came, Umar came. When Uthman came, you did this. And he said what? Ala astahi, mimman yastah, min rajul yastahi minhu al-malaika. Should I not show shyness to a man who the angels, they show shyness to? Uthman was very shy. Walhayau min al-Iman. And shyness is part of Iman. In fact, the Prophet said what? Alhayau khayrun kulluhu. Shyness is goodness, all of it. 
Uthman was a very shy man. The Prophet ﷺ, in fact, he said, I knew Uthman is shy. If he found me like this, he'll never speak to me. Another fadl of Uthman anhu, common, very common. What was the title or the nickname of Uthman? The Nurain, the carrier of two lights. Why? Because he married two of the daughters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who and who? Ruqayya and Umm Kulthum. And they both passed away and Uthman was still alive. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? If I had a third daughter, I would marry him and marry her to you, Uthman. That's a great man. Naam, radiyallahu anhu. And then he said, ثُمَّ لِعَلِيٍّ بِنَ بِطَالِبِ رضي الله عنه. And then after Uthman, the khilafah was to Ali رضي الله عنه. And nobody differed on that. Ali رضي الله عنه, some of his excellences. There's too many. Ahsan, give me one then if there's too many. <coughs> the first child to accept Islam. Ahsan. Mm-hmm. Fadl, Fadl. Something which came from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the day of Khaybar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? La utiyanna al-raya al-lirajulin yuhibbu Allah Rasoola wa yuhibbuhu Allah wa Rasoola. Tomorrow I'll give the banner, the flag. The person who lead the army tomorrow is someone who loves Allah and His Messenger, and Allah and His Messenger love him. That's enough, enough of an excellence. Umar, he says, Umar, if you want to know how great that is, he said, nobody slept that night. That's a testimony of the Prophet that this man tomorrow will be given the flag. He loves Allah and His Messenger. That is real Iman. On top of that, Allah loves him and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What else do you want? Umar said, I woke up in the first daylight morning and I'll just pass by the Prophet وسلم, hoping he'll call me and give me the flag. That's how people rush to do good, Ikhwani. They rush to do good. And the Prophet وسلم, asked for Ali radiallahu anhu. So all of these Sahaba Ikhwani, they had their excellences. But the best of them in terms of order is Abu Bakr and then Umar and then Uthman and then Ali. That's why he says next, وَهُمُ الْخُلَفَاءُ الرَّاشِدُونَ And they are the ones who are intended in the statement of the Prophet ﷺ when he said خُلَفَاءُ الرَّاشِدُونَ The guided caliphs, the guided khulafa. وَالْأَئِمَّةُ الْمَهْدِيُونَ And the imams, the leaders who are rightly guided. They are the ones. They are the ones. Naam. When the Prophet ﷺ said what? أُوصِيكُمْ بِالسَّمِعُ وَالتَّوَعَى I command you to listen and to obey to your leaders. فَإِنَّهُمْ مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِ فَسَيْرَ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Because those of you who leave after me, you'll see a lot of differing. Like today, Muslims are differing a lot. So what do you follow? How do you save yourself? فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ Make sure you follow my sunnah. وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ رَشِدِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِي And the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifas after me, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali. That is the way to save yourself. That is the straight path. Now we will stop here because we are out of time. Do you have any questions? We'll continue next week, inshallah, for sure. Bi'idhnillah, if you are still alive. Naam. No. Are the prophets tested? Yes. If you read the Quran, you'll see how the prophets were tested. They were tested. Adam السلام, was tested. His own two sons, one of them killed another one. You know the story. What they call Habil and Qabil. That's enough test, Akhi, trust me. You have brothers? Sisters maybe? Imagine one of you killing another one. 
Hashal Hashal, we won't ask Allah for that to happen. That would be a great test for your parents, right or wrong. That's a test Adam was tested with. Nuh he was tested his own son. Nuh he gave da'wah 950 years. Yet his own wife refused to believe. His own son refused to believe. Okay, that's a test. That's what Allah mentions in the Quran clearly. Nuh he sees his son drowning. And Nuh as a father, he was affected. It's not easy. It's a real test. 950 years he calls his people, what they do to him. They made fun of him. All they did was make fun of him. To the point that when Nuh speaks, they put fingers on their ears. They made fun of him. That's a great test. 950 years. How old are you? Don't say. You are below 25, and you feel, I'm so old, you know, and life is tough. Life is not tough yet. Hud, alayhi salam, he called his people. Same thing. He said, we're going to kill you. Musa, alayhi salam, look at the tests he faced. You know, Harun. Every prophet, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, his own father, refused, and his own father said, if you don't stop, I'll kill you. Not just kill you, I will stone you to death, the worst death. They wanted to kill him. In fact, they took him and they threw him into the fire. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he gets married. Allah says to him, leave your wife and your young infant. In a valley which is just a desert, there's nothing. It's a real test. Akhi. You know, and our Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, look at that, all the tests he faced. So every prophet, every human being has to be tested. And the tests, they become harder with relative to how much Iman you have. The stronger your Iman, the stronger the tests, and the better the reward. That's when the Prophet ﷺ was sick, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, his fever was very high. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, I touched him and it was very, very hot. And he asked him, oh, Messenger of Allah, is it because your tests are greater the prophets and he said yes we the prophets we are tested more because the tests are according to how much iman you have so everybody gets tested yes now um, we said our actions are created but we do good actions or bad actions so can we say our free will is uncreated our free will is uncreated what does free will mean who chooses, you or Allah? Who chooses the action you do, you or Allah? Okay, so if it's from you, is it created or uncreated? It's created. Don't go into those questions again, which won't benefit you. But at the end of the day, I had to answer you. If it's from you, it's created. If it's from Allah, it's uncreated. You understand? You have a choice. If it's your choice, then you, it's created. Everything of yours is created. Now, anybody else has a question? Khair. We'll stop here again. And tomorrow, inshallah, you should show up and benefit from the Sheikh, Sheikh Omar Hamroun. He is visiting from Algeria. And he'll be here at 7 p.m. He'll give a lecture, inshallah. And during the weekend, he'll be at Quran and Sunnah, QSS. I encourage all of us to go and benefit. You should go and benefit when the visiting shayukh, they visit like this. These are people who studied with the great scholars. You should make effort to go and learn. Quran and Sunnah, all of you know it is, right? At Lawrence, Lawrence and Pharmacy. Lawrence and Pharmacy. Now, Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shalallahu ilaha 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 il